I knew I'll never get another chance like this again. <laughs> like I got no other ends to this business. The head coach is a lonely chair. Leaving Oklahoma and coming here was great, but difficult in a, in a lot of ways. I was definitely more volatile then. <laughs> you feel the progress, you feel the momentum. You see actually a lot of tangible things right now, the way we're recruiting, again, the facility we're building, mm -hmm. like the staff that we just brought in uh, on the defensive side, like there are pieces you can point to and say, that is real progress. I can yeah. see it. That is not some idea. That's not some thought or some hope. Like the, those things are real. The, the Big Ten football wise, as we've studied it, there's definitely new challenges, but you know, our, our goal has been to come here and win national championships. What's up, guys? Welcome into the Next Up Podcast. I'm Adam Brenneman. We got a huge episode today. And I know I say that every time, but this one is especially big. We're at USC, gonna talk to USC head coach Lincoln Riley, one of the biggest names in football, and gonna have a conversation with him that I think will be one of the more open, candid, um, introspective versions of Lincoln Riley you guys have ever seen. Talking about his career, what he's doing now at USC, how he's got to this point, his entire journey. It's gonna be awesome, you guys will love it. Before we get to the pod though, please subscribe to this podcast, whether you're on audio, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you are, throw us a like, share it with someone, throw us a comment. All your support allows me to do this podcast and travel around the country. Appreciate all the love, let's go talk to Coach Riley. get to the pot, I want to tell you guys about my favorite way to fire on sports, prize picks. Guys, I've tried all the different apps, sports betting, daily fantasy, fantasy sports. Prize picks is by far the best way to get action on sports. On prize picks, you pick players instead of teams, so it's tons of fun, and if you know how players are gonna perform, you can make tons of money. Each player has a set stat projection, and you pick more or less based on how you think they're gonna perform. For example, Steph Curry, 20 points more or less. If you think he's gonna have more, you pick more. If he has less, you pick less. You pair it with some other players, and you can win up to 100. 100x your money. It's fun, it's easy, and you can have massive paydays. The best part is I have a $100 deposit bonus for you guys to try it out right now. Use my code ADAMB or the link in the description. You get a 100% deposit match up to $100. So if you put $100 in, PrizePix will give you $100. Now you got 200 to play with. I'm telling you guys, I've tried it all. PrizePix is by far the best. And of course, guys, supporting my sponsors helps me a ton, allows me to travel around the country. So it means a lot to me if you'd support PrizePix using code ADAMB or the link in the description down the app and then get that $100 deposit bonus let's get to the pot welcome thank you yeah, we just talked to miller it's just a fun fun conversation he's a cool kid yeah he's a really cool yeah. kid yeah that's good that's good yeah, been, they got a good lineup for you you've been doing a bunch of uh bunch of interviews this off season a bunch of shows and yeah <laughs> uh you know different points you know around yeah. all, uh, more around spring ball i don't do a whole lot in may um so yeah may and june are actually probably the slowest really? maybe of the year, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, I know you don't do a lot of these, so I'm, I'm, I appreciate yeah. you yeah. appreciate you doing this. Absolutely. Um, we good, Thomas? Yes, sir. Ready to roll? Ready. Cool. Coach, I, I appreciate you having us out. Um, I've wanted to come here for a while and talk to you, so I'm excited just because all the success you've had in college football and the quarterbacks you've developed, um, it's great to be here, so I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. You got it. Um, I, I wanted to start with Two years ago, when you took this job, your first team meeting in this room, probably, right? When you walked through that door, what was going through your mind when you were the new head coach at USC? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, things turned over really quickly. Yeah. Obviously, it's been been written about and discussed uh, uh, probably enough. But, yeah, it was uh, it was exciting, you know, to, to come in here, uh, you know, first, you know, on this campus. It was the first time I'd ever even been on campus mm -hmm. uh, was, was a couple of days after we accepted the job. And so to come in here and to... To finally meet the team, uh, to get around some of the guys that you know would become part of this turnaround and part of mm -hmm. our, our early time here was was important and it was exciting and yeah it made it it made it all seem you know more real yeah. and uh, yeah it was it was a little surreal even in that moment and, and looking back on it now it's hard to believe it's been two and a half years <laughs> it's kind of you know it's flown by there's there's when you take over one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, anytime you take something over, it's going to feel very new, and there's going to be an element in the beginning where 
there's so much to get done and you yeah. got to get a plan and, and just kind of get things started. And then I think even that's probably even heightened when you take over one that, that had been struggling a little mm -hmm. bit. And, uh, and you're, you're not necessarily coming in to try to continue things. You're trying to, yeah. to revamp. And so, uh, yeah, from that day, a lot's changed, but it's, uh, no, it's been, it was a it was a, a great start, kind of a, a cool beginning to this, and, and walking in this room where it all started yeah. certainly brings back some of those memories. You mentioned some of the changes. What 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 was the thing that when you got here you said like we have to change this right away, or I got to implement my part on this right away? Yeah, I, I think for me it was never, you know, it was never about anything like personal. Like it, we got to come do it my way. I think yeah. it's like take the things that we've learned as a staff uh, at our previous stops, other, you know, things that we've taken that we think are, you know, would be successful in travel mm -hmm. and travel and be important no matter where you were at. And then I also think with these jobs, there's an element to understanding the place you're at, yeah. uh, the university, the surroundings, you know, what it takes to be successful here in some ways may be the same as, uh, you know, a, a, another school across the country, but in, there's also going to be some key differences. So I think mm -hmm. finding that, uh, first for us was the culture and, yeah. and teaching these guys how to, you know, what winning looks like again. And that was a, there was a major reset there, maybe in every mm -hmm. way possible. And, and then, yeah, now again, you look back two and a half years, we're getting ready to, we're going into a new conference. <laughs> uh, we've got a new athletic administration. Um, we've, you know, the, the rules around college football drastically changed. We're getting ready to move into what I believe will be the best college football facility in the country, which will be a, a massive, massive upgrade from, you know, what we currently have. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's very little that hasn't changed and changed in a big way. Yeah, no, it's interesting. Like the job's so much different than it even was two and a half years ago, like you just mentioned. And, and you know, looking back on those two and a half years, in what ways right now, does it look like what you thought it would look like? And in what ways, you just mentioned some of the changes, but in what ways has it not always been what you thought it was going to be? Uh, I, I knew there would be some unexpected like twists and turns mm -hmm. along the way. Like you don't, you, you just, you don't come back from where it was yeah. without that. Like everybody wants the the movie script, right? <laughs> everybody wants just the smooth, easy way to the top where it sequences out just like you think it would. And it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It's, I've used the term often with people here with our team, like it's a jagged road to the top. Like yeah. there's going to be, there's going to be moments where you're really climbing and there's a ton of excitement. There's going to be moments where you're up and then maybe you're down a little bit and then you got to fight your way back up. Like mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's probably how it more of it actually feels, you know, yeah. day to day internally. And I think it's regardless of, you know, what happened the day before, whether, it was really successful, whether it wasn't successful, that we just continue our climb. And, and mm -hmm. eventually when you do that, you're gonna look back over a period of time and you're gonna have made real progress. And if you keep making progress over time with the resources and, and I think the potential that this place has, eventually you're gonna be in a great place. And I think there's a confidence about everybody that's in this program, like they, they feel that, yeah. right? That does it, does it mean that throughout the two and a half years that every single day we've looked at it and said, all right, well, it's where it's supposed to be. No, of course not, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it truly is a climb, but you you feel the progress, you feel the momentum, you see actually a lot of tangible things right now, the way we're recruiting, again, the facility we're building, mm -hmm. like the staff that we just brought in uh, on the defensive side, like there are pieces you can point to and say, that is real progress. I can yeah. see it. That is not some idea. That's not some thought or some hope. Like the, those things are real mm -hmm. and those things don't happen unless there's things being done kind of behind the scenes to continue to build it. And that, that's, that's what's happening and people within certainly feel it. Yeah. Real quick guys, education has been a huge part of my life and my career. My undergrad degree at Penn State, my master's degree at UMass. That's why I'm so excited that Southern New Hampshire University has now sponsored the podcast. SNHU has so many different degree options. They have flexibility in how you get, get your degree. It's affordable. You can do it online. There's so many different options. It's a perfect way for anyone who's busy or anyone who wants to advance their career to get a leg up. I especially love their bachelor's degree in sports management. Anyone who wants to be in sports to look at this option because it's so affordable. And a degree from SNHU in sports management will give you respect in the sports industry. 
industry. You guys can get more information by just putting in your email address and your name, maybe some special offers in the link in the description or going to snhu.edu slash Adam Brenneman. The URL is on the screen as well if you're watching. That's link in the description or snhu.edu slash Adam Brenneman. Put your email in get some more information. And guys, supporting our sponsors helps me a ton. So would appreciate you guys clicking on that link and putting in your info just to get some more information. No strings attached. Go check it out today. I was thinking on when, when we were flying here across the country, uh, what I want to talk to you about. And I was thinking about just all, obviously the success with the quarterbacks, the, you know, Baker and Kyler and Caleb. And, um, but the unique part is that all those guys transferred in, had been through some adversity. Um, it wasn't always, you know, butterflies and rainbows in their, in their life. Mm -hmm. um, but you found a way when they played for you to block out distraction and get them to play their very best on Saturday. What do you think goes into how you specifically actually develop quarterbacks, especially because also like it's hard in college football, a lot of five-star big time quarterbacks don't pan out, but a lot of them have for you specifically. Um, what do you think it is about how you actually develop quarterbacks that allows that to happen? Well, we've, I think we've done a good job of sticking to our guns on the way we evaluate guys. Yeah. Um, we've, you know, we've historically not offered uh, a lot of guys. Uh, we've, we've really zeroed in on the people that we really believe in um, and have not, I, we have not cast a very wide net. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we've stayed true to that. And it's been, sure, it challenges at some point because there's a lot of really good players and a lot of really good quarterbacks out there. And so uh, I, think, I think that would be number one. Uh, we've kind of got our internal list of priorities that we, mm -hmm. we stick to, that we very much believe in. Um, I think we've been able to put them in some really good situations in terms of the, the coaching staff, uh, the assistant coaches, the scheme, the, being able to put good players around them. Uh, and, I, and then I think we've been able to adapt. Each of those guys that you mentioned had different strengths, mm -hmm. had different weaknesses. And you know, I think part of developing is helping players really improve on their weaknesses, but also competitively on Saturdays for us, are you putting them in a position to do what they do best and, and, and building it to them? Or are they saying, are you saying, no, this is what we're going to do. And I need you to be able to do this. And I, we've been a little bit more of the first. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, and, and I think there's been a consistency with that, that our guys have appreciated through yeah. the years. So, uh, but it all starts with having the right guys in the room. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's, you know, there, there's a lot of people uh, that could have coached those guys and coached them really well <laughs> and done a great job with them too. So I, I first admit that. Yeah. Uh, great point about it all starts with evaluation. What, what is, you know, say you're about to watch a high school quarterback and decide, you know, are we interested or are we going to offer this kid? What are the things that you are looking for on film right away? Well, I, I think first, just an overall standard of, of, like, I think when we watch guys, we, we have a standard of play for that position and others within our program where we we will we'll get the full evaluation, but then I ask ourselves some tough questions. Like mm. if, if the standard is to for a quarterback or a, a linebacker or safety or whoever it is to play at this level, when we watch this tape, do we have a real belief that this guy can do that? Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, you you got to really believe that as a coach. And, and for me, I, I know like specifically for quarterbacks, like if I watch somebody and I'm not pretty excited watching <laughs> that tape, that's probably telling me something. That doesn't mean there's not things I don't like about the guy, but you know, you want to coach people that you're passionate about. Just like mm -hmm. players, you know, recruits out there, they want coaches that are passionate about them or a place that they're passionate about. Like it goes both ways. Yeah. And so I think we got to have a passion about what they are. Um, you know, we have some physical characteristics that we, we try to check off, which I don't think would be anything, you know, out of the ordinary, but we also try to pay a lot of attention to the makeup of them, you know, who they are as a competitor, who they are as a teammate, uh, do they make others around them better? Um, we, we try to really pay attention as much as we can and do our homework. And then, you know, and then I, we've just been extremely patient and I know it's been frustrating at times for people because we are, and, and. You know, there's, you know, a lot of different trains of thoughts. There's a lot of schools that just throw out offers. It's more of a first come, first serve deal. And that's just never really been our mentality. And, and you know, has it hurt us at times? Maybe it has, but I think in the long run, it's been, you know, what's worked for us. Yeah. With those quarterbacks I just mentioned, the guys that won Heisman for you, what's something, is there a unique trait that you feel like those guys had in common that allowed them to be that, that successful? Yeah, I'd say self-belief. You know, just a, a true inner self-confidence. Uh, they all came into situations and where 
it's not like anything was handed to any of these guys. I mean, mm -hmm. the, every one of those guys had to come in and yeah. earn a job. At, at, and some of them actually crossed over enough where one of the other guys was in the room or there was all, already a really good player in the room or somebody mm -hmm. that had played. And they had to be willing to come in and compete, but they believed in themselves enough. It wasn't necessarily about what else is in the room. Mm -hmm. It was, I believe in my care, my skill set, my work ethic, myself, and I believe in the situation that they have in terms of the the offense or the development. And if you combine those two things, the competition will take care of itself. And that they all they all felt that. And and that, that was important to me. I've always when I've gotten around a player at any position that you feel like is overly concerned about what else is in the room, is that a good precursor, right, for mm -hmm. looking ahead and saying, all right, this guy's going to be willing to come and compete, like, no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. um, and a place like USC, there's going to be other good players yeah. in the room. Like, that's <laughs> part of it. You want to play at a place like this, like, that's part of it. And mm -hmm. you either embrace that or you shy away from that. And I feel like that's always very telling. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask about how in today's college football, with all that goes on with being a head coach, right? Like NIL, the portal, the media, don't raising money. How you balance that with also being an elite play caller and and being able to game plan during the weeks and you know not many there aren't many that are great at doing both, but it seems like you have obviously have been great at both of those different things and. I'm assuming time management's a big part, but how do you how do you do both? Yeah, I mean, I think one you got to have a great staff. Mm -hmm. um, you, you do. You can't be you can't be three places at once. <laughs> although at times it would be nice. <laughs> um, and so having having people not and not just assist, assistant coaches. When you talk about the support staff and all the roles, all the different things that are going on simultaneously in a day, you have to have people that you can trust. Um, I've had to learn to to delegate better. I wasn't mm -hmm. very good at it, certainly when I when I first became a head coach, so I've had to get better at that. Uh, I've had to learn to really, really like compartmentalize things, um, you know, just personally to be able to, mm -hmm. you know, be present if, if I'm dealing with something, you know, for a team meeting or something team wide, and then all of a sudden I've got to switch gears and roll into, you know, more of an offensive coordinator role, and then I got to switch gears and go back to a, you know, a, a something for a donor <laughs> or a booster. I mean, like it's, there's there's a now there's a there's a GM aspect to this mm -hmm. job with well, as you said I mean these guys essentially you know you know essentially being very close to a professional model so yeah I've had to learn to compartmentalize and try to really section my time off so that I can get it covered and then like I said build a staff around that 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 complements what you're trying to do um, and it's been I've had times in my career where I've thought about um, you know potentially giving the part of that part up. Um, in mm -hmm. terms of you know play calling, uh, but I, I do you know it's it's been it's been pretty successful. It's something <laughs> where I feel like I I can bring value to the program, um, and I'm lucky enough to have a great staff that that allows me to be able to do it still. Yeah. Real quick, guys, before we get back to the pod, I have an amazing way that you can support your favorite college's NIL efforts. I'm working with a freight trucking and logistics company, and if you own a business or know someone that owns a business that moves product or ships things across the country or just ships things anywhere within your state, and you switch your trucking services to the company that we're working with, they will give a percentage of all money that your company spends on logistics and trucking to your favorite school's NIL efforts, all while keeping your trucking, logistics, and freight prices the same. So it's a super easy way for your company to support NIL efforts at your favorite school. You can support your school, get more money for the players so your school can compete without spending any more money yourself. Simple solution. So if you're a business owner, you know a business owner who'd be interested in this, or you're a school or a collective that knows businesses that you want to reach out to about this, send me an email to my personal email address and I'll get on the line with you. That's at Adam at BrennanMedia.com. It's on the screen right there and in the description. Adam at BrennanMedia.com. Send me an email and we'll set up a time to talk. Um, I, I've, uh, I've heard other coaches talk about you when you were like a young GA or analyst or early in your career and talk about um, like just how hardworking you were and that you were at the office all the time. And, uh, and you know, I've heard people talk about it on podcasts and other, and other things. And take me back to that time when you were trying to make it as a young coach. And what were those things that you were doing to try to put in the extra work and ultimately like move up in your career? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing I look back, like I was so appreciative for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, it was one of those deals. Like I knew I'll never get another chance like this again. <laughs> like I got no other ends to this business. Like this is, 
I, I was just to be a part of a team, to be a part of a Div Division One football program at the time at Texas Tech, like it meant, I, I can't even describe how much it meant to me. And so it was, it was not hard to, to, to be motivated to, you know, do whatever I could to, to help the team and help the organization and contribute wherever I could. And that mm -hmm. was just my mindset. It was, you know, no job too big, no job too small. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm here to try to provide value and help us win. And, and I think as I, as the years went on, you know, I was able to earn some trust um, and, and from, you know, from Mike Leach. And then, and then you look at all the assistants. I mean, the, the coaching tree from Texas Crazy. Tech at that time, <laughs> you, you look back on it now, it's insane. <laughs> yeah. um, just how many of the guys have gone out and done so well and are, you know, running their own programs or their own offense or their own defense and doing, and, and that's a really testament to the job that, that Mike did in putting together that staff. But yeah, I just, I think continually, you, I think the biggest advice that you have to go earn it. You know, like yeah. you have to go earn that trust and go earn that responsibility. You know, people are not just going to give that to you. Nobody is owed that. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's something that you have to be willing to go fight for. But if you'll do that, a lot of times people, if they see you do a good job and that you're responsible, uh, that you're accountable, they're going to give you naturally maybe some more opportunities to prove yourself and, and to move up. And mm -hmm. that's, and, and if you keep answering those questions, you make yourself, you know, the, I think the hope is for every young person in any industry, like you want to make yourself where that company or that business or that organization cannot imagine doing what they do without That's you right, there. Right. Like you, you make yourself, you know, as valuable as you possibly can. And, and I think when you do that, it gives you an opportunity to move up. Mm -hmm. um, with the transfer portal being prominent in college football now, how has it impacted your approach and your strategy with roster management and kind of the balance of like we, we gotta you gotta build this program for the long term, which a lot of times is high school guys you develop. Also, like it's, you gotta win now, right? You gotta win this coming season. How do you balance that when you're looking at you know numbers and how many guys you're gonna take and just building the culture of your, of your program? Yeah, it's a question that you know we're all all you know college coaches right now mm -hmm. are internally asking themselves. Uh, you know, for us here at SC. The portal in the beginning, especially, was a chance for us to get relevant or back to relevant quickly. Mm -hmm. um, we, we looked at where the roster was, where the program was, and did a deep dive on that. And it was obvious that we needed to make a lot of quick changes. I, I use the words like shock the system. Mm -hmm. We had to shock the system in the beginning, and we did that. I mean, we turned over massive amounts of roster spots in the first two years. Um, and and I would look back on that now and say that put us right in the forefront of what we wanted to accomplish in the first two years. I mean, mm -hmm. we we probably overachieved a little bit in the first year. We yeah. came, you know, won 11 games and came within a quarter of going to the college football playoff. And we probably we probably honestly weren't good enough to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, but we the team really came together um, and got on a run and got some momentum. And we had a phenomenal first year. Um, you know, we, we dipped back heavy again into the transfer portal year two, still knowing the roster had mm -hmm. a lot of gaping holes that you can't fix overnight with high school recruiting. Um, and we put ourselves in some great positions. I mean, we're sitting there six and zero at mid season. Yeah. We didn't play very good in the second half. We didn't take advantage of it, which is disappointing, but we put ourselves there. I mean, we mm -hmm. were right in the mix, you know, both years, which was a big step up from you know where it was two and a half years ago. So I think that was successful. Now, it's kind of cool, you know, looking back, kind of how it all played out because as as everybody was seeing what's happening with the transfer portal on the surface the first two years, mm -hmm. and that's the majority of you know what you're seeing on Saturdays. Um, high school recruiting's gone really well, yeah, and the development piece has gone really well, and a lot of that's been happening a little bit beneath the surface, and you're not mm -hmm. necessarily seeing that a lot on Saturdays. Well, we get to the bowl game, we have a lot of guys not play in the bowl game. Well, all of a sudden, we play with yeah. a bunch of these young guys. We play with a lot of what we've been developing, kind of behind the scenes, and and everybody kind of saw the results and how how well we played in that game, and so I think. We're, we're kind of in not kind of we are in the middle of a, a little bit of a shift from a little bit kind of the phase one, if you will, mm -hmm. of transfer portal, portal up and let's get competitive to let's start to shift in what we want to be long term. And yeah. what we want to be long term is a developmental program. Uh, and we want to get away from the portal um, 
except on a you know a very specific basis. Mm -hmm. And we want to be a team that relies heavily, heavily on recruiting out of the high school level and developing like crazy. And, and it feels like we're in that turn right now. Yeah. Has the move to the Big Ten changed your strategy at all from in any part of recruiting who you're looking for from a talent perspective when you're evaluating? How has it kind of impacted how you how you build a program? Well, I think first it's 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 in some ways maybe opening up even more some areas of the country mm -hmm. uh, to recruit. Now, USC has always been and always will be a yeah. national brand, but all of a sudden with you playing some games in the Midwest on the East Coast regularly, uh, I think it makes you know some of those areas even more accessible. And you've seen that even last year with, with our recruiting class, mm -hmm. signing several players from those areas. Um, and I think that has a chance to continue. Um, I, I do think there's a couple of spots as you look at a roster that you might carry one more of this position and maybe one less of that position. Mm -hmm. But the, the Big Ten football-wise, as we've studied it, I don't think is like radically different <laughs> from all the other conferences. Yeah. I mean, I think there's some really, really good teams, some really good coaches, some great you know venues you're going to go into. Like, there's definitely new challenges, but. You know, our, our goal has been to come here and win national championships. I mm -hmm. mean, that, that's been the goal. That's why we signed up from the beginning. To do that, you have to be good enough to beat everybody, you know, yeah. including Big Ten teams and anybody else. So I think where we were headed anyways in terms of our program, uh, I don't know that we were going to have to change course a lot. Uh, but, but at the same time, you know, have a respect and understand there are new challenges coming than ones that we're looking forward to. Yeah. Uh, I, I talk a lot about how important alignment is for a football program to be successful. AD, president, board, like everyone's gotta be aligned and, yes. and doing the same things. You have a new boss, right? <laughs> From when you got this job, Jen Cohen, um, who I know is committed to doing it at a high level, did it at Washington, got him in a, you know, a lot of success there. How has that transition been um, just from you know an, an alignment standpoint? Yeah, Jen, Jen has been tremendous. I mean, mm -hmm. I, th I really believe she was the best hire that we could have made um, and has really continued the momentum, I think, that was already here and, and mm -hmm. even taken it to a new level. And I love I love how progressive she is. She yeah. is absolutely a forward thinker, which I think fits within our program. I think it fits with <laughs> being in L.A. Mm -hmm. um, I think it fits with all the changes that are going on in college football. The people that can be cutting edge and one step ahead, I think, are going to have a massive advantage as all mm -hmm. these things uh, really come to, to kind of come front and center. Um, and yeah, she's been just a, a tremendous kind of partner in, in all of this. And so we, we, yeah, we've got a great relationship. It's been a lot of fun working with her. She, we have a very shared vision of, you know, what we want this football program to look like and the moves uh, that we have to make, the strategies that we have to take, the aggressiveness that we have to have to get it there. So I couldn't, uh, certainly could not have worked out any yeah. better from my end. I wanted to ask you, um, if you could go back to, I think it was 2017, your first head coaching job at Oklahoma, mm -hmm. what would be the piece of advice you would give yourself that you know now, that you, you wish you could have known back then? Mm. Oh, I would say, I would say delegate mm -hmm. more, <laughs> um, you know, really you know, trust your people. Um, trust the people you've hired that you brought into the building. Um, and then I would say I was, I was really, I was definitely more volatile then, um, for <laughs> sure. Just on, and not even like outwardly, but just, you know, highs and lows with every single thing that goes on in a day-to-day -day basis. And I think, you know, it's a job of a leader to be steady, yeah. you know, and, and, and you're going to kind of like we talked about the before on the, the, the evolution of a program or a business or anything that you're trying to kind of lift up, like you're, you're going to have bad days. Like mm -hmm. you're going to have days when it doesn't feel good or days where maybe the progress wasn't what you wanted that day, or you're just, there's going to be natural ups and downs. I think your ability to stay steady throughout it all is really, really important. I, I certainly, I'm probably a little more steady than I was yeah. then. I've been, <laughs> having gone through it a little bit now and, you know, try to be, you know, something that the, everybody within the organization can count on and they know what to expect out of me day in and day out. And so hopefully that's something I've gotten a little bit better yeah. at. One of the really cool things 
that you've done is invest a lot in creative in the recruiting department and the creative people you have around this program. I mean, you guys are putting out the, I just did a video the other day on the, the, uh, well, what was it, the, the official visit video you guys put yeah, out that, yeah. that, that was awesome. Um, it, and you've been really innovative in that approach. Where, why did you decide to do that? And ultimately, I'm assuming it's paid off for you a lot on just brand and a brand awareness and in recruiting. Yeah, I just think any, anything, you mentioned the word alignment before, mm -hmm. right? You, you were talking about it in terms of you know, administration and the school and the football program, but I think there's gotta be alignment like within your program too. Yeah. Like if, you, if you've got things that are important to you, they've gotta be important to every level of the program and every part of the program. And so, you know, we've tried to be cutting edge and progressive and really developmental on, you know, how we coach, you know, how we take care of our players, um, mm -hmm. Facilities, all of that, strength and conditioning, all parts. So why would we not do that in creative as well? And so we've tried to hire some of the best people. Uh, we've got a tremendous team that are very progressive. And then I think the 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 awesome thing out here is it takes some great people and a staff that that part is important to. But then you put them in L.A. Yeah. You know, really and cool. then you add in the opportunities, the resources. I mean. One of the ideas out of that video that you referenced on the LVs mm -hmm. came from a guy here that's a student at our <laughs> cinema school. And you know, we have the number one cinema school in the world that's yeah. 50 yards from where we're sitting right here. And he came to our people with an idea and they collaborated and you see, you know, what became of that. Now this guy's probably gonna win 15 Oscars here down the line <laughs> at some point, but that like, that's yeah. that's kind of the, the kind of people that, that you know, are, are part of the norm here in, mm -hmm. in every level and so, to be able to come here and, and, and take advantage of the place that you're at and the resources and the opportunities that are here, like that's one example and there's so many of those. And so, yeah, it's been cool to see our people be able to kind of integrate within this city, all that's here and, and uh, yeah, you got, everybody got to see a pretty uh, a yeah. pretty good instance. I, uh, I, I talk a lot with people I interview about um, adversity on this, this uh podcast. You know, I've been through adversity in my playing career. Everyone, I feel like that's reached your level of success. At some point you face some adversity. What's the moment in your career or life where you feel like you face the most adversity and then how do you ultimately overcome it? Ooh, the heavy question. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot. I mean, I've had definitely had some coming up as a player. Uh, I definitely had some in my early years of coaching. Uh, mm. I absolutely have had you know, you have plenty of it as a head coach because it's uh, the the head coach is a lonely chair. You know, it is. It's uh, my good friend Ruffin McNeil always described it, which is a great way. It's like balancing a three legged stool. You know, it's it's never you're never qu quite settled. You're never quite mm -hmm. steady. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think certainly the transition, you know, out here, you know, leaving Oklahoma and coming here was was was, you know, great, but difficult in a, in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, losing uh, my good friend Dave Nickel, who we brought out here as an assistant coach, uh, just a couple of months after we took the job, was was extremely difficult. Um, that was definitely one of the toughest. And uh, yeah, I mean, you have things like that happen; these massive changes in your life of changing where you live and where you work. You know, almost on a you know, in such an instant, and then you know, losing one of your best friends and coworkers and all that. That that was a that was a hard time, um, and but yeah, I think you gotta, you know, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your mm -hmm. family. You got to believe in the decisions that you make, um, and and I think you you have to surround yourself with people that are gonna look after you in your tough times, and you're gonna do the same thing for them when adversity hits as well. And I think having having those friends and people in your life, uh, having people that 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 are there for you no matter what, and don't mm -hmm. care about how many games you win or, or, you know, you know, how much success you have or what people think on the outside, but they're just truly there for you. You, you can't, you know, that's, it's difficult to measure how important that is. And I've had, I've been lucky. I've got some great people that I feel that way about and have been great for me. And I've tried to do the same for them. And they certainly, you know, help get me through any of the tough times that I've, that I've yeah. been in. Last couple of things I got for you, coach. Appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask you about the changes you made on defense this, this offseason. Um, you made a change of defensive coordinator. I was just saying, 
to someone else. You didn't just make a change. You like completely flipped it on his head and went, and went all in on it. You got Coach Henderson from the Rams and you got Coach Lynn from UCLA, hired North Dakota State's head coach, like just went big and said, we're going to you know, bring the best staff in the country here. Yeah. What ultimately went into making that decision? And you know, how, do you feel like it, how do you feel like things have gone so far? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we just, we defensively, we just simply weren't progressing the way we needed to. And it's, you know, in these big jobs, you know, momentum is key. Mm -hmm. And we were never able to quite fully capture that defensively. Uh, we had some really good coaches and some phenomenal people here, people that are great friends of ours. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, there is a, a responsibility to that. And so we felt like we had to make a change. And when you're going to make a change at a place like this, I just I don't think you can look at it with a small perspective, and yeah. we tried not to. We we tried to focus on development and people that were really proven um, in both their development of the individual positions, and then having a lot of people that had had big picture oversight and responsibility, and had had a lot of success. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, our board our board started uh, pretty aggressive, and we really never had to to waver from <laughs> that. Uh, the administration was incredibly supportive, which is very important when you're, when you're hiring people. Mm -hmm. And then I think people, I think these guys were able to see some of the momentum that had been built in this program the last few years. And, and ultimately they wanted to come be a part of it. And it wasn't a overly difficult sell. And I, yeah. I think the guys all believed in the vision, believed what we are going to be defensively. And yeah, I mean, I think the response from our current players, the way we performed in spring, uh, the response from the rest of our staff, the response from our recruits. I mean, you see defensive recruiting right now is, you know, <laughs> at, a, at a high right now. Mm -hmm. And so um, those things are real. But these, these guys that we brought in are phenomenal coaches. And that, now you do. You have to go prove it on Saturdays in yeah. the fall. And that's ultimately where it's going to get judged. But it's off to a great start. Yeah. The expectation of this place, obviously, is to win a championship, right? What are still the one or two things that you feel like still have to happen for that to for that to be a reality real quick before we get back to the podcast gotta tell you guys about our new sponsor ekron athletics man ekron is one of my favorite products i have ever tried one of my favorite sponsors of this podcast their new percussion massager is elite the castrell percussion massager just launched and it is their best massage gun yet and i've tried a lot of these guns there are several upgrades over their previous guns which were already considered among the best available this massager is extremely powerful and it gives a deep tissue massage. Its angled handle design makes it easier to get to more areas and the scrolling wheel makes it easy to adjust while you're using it. It has six speeds and six attachments so you can really tailor it to your needs and to your muscle group you're targeting. I wish I had this when I was playing. I probably would have avoided some injuries, been more ready to play on game day and recovered faster. Best part, I have a promo code for all of you to try Ekron and their new massage gun. Use promo code NEXTUP for 25% off all orders on Ekron Athletics. That's promo code NEXTUP for 25% off all orders. And guys, supporting our sponsors helps me a ton. So go support Ekron Athletics. Use that promo code NEXTUP for 25% off your orders. Yeah, I mean, I, in reality, we're, we're two recruiting classes in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we got here so late, year one, that the, the high school recruiting class, we were able to salvage a little bit, but it was, you know, numbers-wise, very minimal. Uh, you know, I've always believed you got to get that that third one in. You know, when you look historically at it, and, and and again, it depends on the roster that you take over. But when you take over one that was, you know, uh, not not <laughs> super loaded, we'll put it that way. Um, <laughs> then you've got some you got some work to do. And so, you know, we're we're two recruiting classes in. You, you felt that. You felt it in the bowl game. That's got to continue to improve. Uh, we've got to get to that third and that fourth one to where you, I think you feel like you really have the competitive depth and a, and a talent base that you know mm -hmm. you can go out there and, and, and not just compete with each every team in the country and beat every team in the country on a day-to-day -day basis, but be able to sustain it, right? Because yeah. now you look at our game with the expansion of the playoff, our season now is gonna be the <laughs> longest in college football history, mm -hmm. you know, for, for whoever wins these. And so you've got to prepare for that. So yeah, we're, we're on our climb. Uh, but getting to those third and fourth recruiting classes, uh, getting the new facility, moving in, we're about a year and a half out right now from, from moving into our new facility. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our defensive coaches and this defensive system here at UC USC getting fully you know, acclimated, uh, installed and running at an optimal level. I mean, I think all those things, they're in motion, the progress yeah. is there, and, and now it's, now it's got to take hold. Yeah. Coach, new facilities being built, a lot of hype about it, about a year and a half away, right? Um, what are you looking forward to most about getting into that place? 
Yeah, I, I can't wait. I mean, it's uh, it was something that was really important to me, um, even in the, the hiring process. I mean, it was something that was central to, to me agreeing to come here because uh, I knew that was going to be really, really important. Mm. Um, you know, we I, I feel like this is a place that should offer you the best of the best. And, and yeah. in a lot of ways, it does. It's one of the best educations in the country. It's one of the best places to live. I mean, there's the, one of the greatest college football histories. Uh, of all time, and I think we ought to have a facility to match that. And here, pretty soon, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to, and to be able to, not just be a part of that, but we've been able to be involved in every step of the way, the design phase. Um, uh, you know, starting to think forward about not just college football now, but what's it going to be like in five, ten, fifteen mm -hmm. years. We've been able to take advantage of being in this city, having a lot of different resources brought to the table in terms of people that are incredibly knowledgeable and forward thinking in areas of you know recovery, mm -hmm. sports science, AI, I mean, yeah. everything that you can think of. And so it's been fun you know, being able to put it together and to actually see construction out there now, <laughs> to see it starting to come up is, uh, is you know, it's gonna be a special moment for this program because yeah. it's, it's needed it. Um, it's it's having a facility that, that represents this place is really important. Yeah, I was going to ask how much you're involved in the design of the whole place. Um, you said you're involved. Was there any any specific things you were like, uh, we need to have this in this facility, or they showed you the plans, you're like, ah, that weight room's not big enough, or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, er, I mean, every part of it. I mean, we yeah. have really we've spent a lot of time. We've had you know, tons of meetings with our designers throughout mm -hmm. the entire process. When we're lucky, we've got a staff of guys that have come from a lot of great programs, both at the professional and collegiate level that have had a lot of great ideas and feedback yeah. as well. But we've really looked to invest in the sports science side of it. The recovery side of it are, are gonna be, I think gonna make it the best one in the country mm -hmm. with with the planning and again, the availability of resources and all the all the knowledge and all everything that is out here. Yeah. It's been so cool to bring so many people for to the table from all those different areas. Mm -hmm. And I think it's gonna it's gonna make it phenomenal. I can't wait for yeah. it to open. Uh, last question I got for you, Coach. I, I like to end with this question for coaches. What What's your why? What's the reason that you do what you do? You put in all the hours every single day. What ultimately drives you? Yeah, I, I love being a part of a team. Mm -hmm. I just, I do. And whether my role has been the lowest man on the totem pole or being the head coach or anything in between, my role has always like meant the world to me. Mm -hmm. It's something I've always invested in and I've always wanted people to be able to count on me. And then I, I love college football. I do. I love the history of it. I love what it stands for. Uh, it captivated me when I was a young person. And to think now that I get a chance to, to you know, do that on a daily basis is still, mm -hmm. you know, it's still kind of mind blowing for me, honestly. Yeah. So now those are the two things that, that drive me and the reason I do what I do. Awesome. Coach, appreciate your time. This is awesome. Thanks for having us out. Um, I could ask you questions all day, but Katie will drag me out of here. If I... <laughs> all good. All <laughs> no, good. I appreciate it. Thank no, you, man, Coach. Happy to do it. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Enjoyed it. Yeah, appreciate you it. got it. Yeah, it you wasn't too it. hard, right? No, it's easy. <laughs>